is nationwide on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. Thank you for joining us. We are live in Abuja. I'm Hawa Salihu Adama. We start with bilateral relations today as President Muhammadu Buhari says, Nigeria is committed to deepening and expanding collaboration with Zambia in the greater interest of their people and economies. The president said that these were receiving a special envoy of the Zambian counterpart, of his Zambian counterpart, Edgar Chagwa Lungu. He said Nigeria and Zambia stand to benefit from each other in further areas of collaboration, which are in critical economic sectors. The president explained that doing so will also impact positively on the African continent. The special envoy, Joseph Malangi, who is Zambia's Minister of Foreign Affairs, he said, whenever the strong strengthens the weak, Equity has been exemplified. The envoy told President Buhari that the Zambian leader is desirous of stronger bilateral relations with Nigeria, as well as greater impetus for the Joint Commission on Cooperation with the two countries. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari has applauded the elevation of the Managing Director Chief Executive Officer of Airtel Networks Limited, Mr. Shegu Ogunsoya to the position of MD CEO of Airtel Africa PLC. A statement by the Special Advisor Media and Publicity to the President, Femi Adeshina. The President says the appointment has once again proven that Nigeria has an abundance of quality professionals who can hold their own in any part of the continent and even beyond. President Buhari is sure that with the cognate experience of the new MD CEO for Africa, he would acquaint himself creditably and repeat the strides that made him position Airtel Nigeria as the second largest telecommunications company by revenue, serving over 50 million customers. Senate is assuring Nigerians of its effort to improve the electoral process in the country. President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawal, re-echoed this in a message while declaring a one-day public hearing on a bill to establish the National Electoral Offences Commission. Mobalaji Moribiri completes the report. Elections in Nigeria in recent times are said to have been bedeviled by electoral offences. However, the inability to prosecute offenders still leaves a gap in the electoral system. The bill for an act to establish the National Electoral Offences Commission is therefore to take the responsibility of ensuring that electoral offenders are prosecuted and convicted if found guilty. Our task here today is to examine all sides and provide the sides as qualified stakeholders. Like any other bill, it is an imperfect proposal that will improve as it makes its way through the legislation process. The process will soon be concluded as we are presently working with stakeholders. A cross section of stakeholders gave their submissions on the importance of the bill to Nigeria's democracy. We would like to see more prosecution of offenders, not just of ballot box snatchers and falsifiers of results of election, but most importantly, their sponsors. This is an important bill in the electoral reform agenda, and we look forward to its success. With the outcome of the public hearing, it is believed that the Ninth Assembly is committed to ensuring that the bill becomes an act. From the National Assembly, Mobolaji, Muribiri, NTA News. And still seen with the National Assembly, specialized institutions are fundamental to revolutionize a society through manpower development. This is the view expressed by stakeholders at a public hearing in support of bills for the establishment of Arabic language village and that of University of Maritime held by the Senate Committee on Tertiary Institutions and TED Fund. Dayo Ogunshala has that. Stakeholders, including the President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, represented by the Senate Deputy Majority Leader, Ajayi Brufis, expressed optimism that the bills, when passed, 
we establish Inter-University Center for Arabic Studies, which is capable of protecting Nigeria's interests in international relations. The start of the bills is enhancing the capacities of citizens preparatory to adequate human capacity quotient. We recommend that this bill should provide for the establishment of liaison offices in the six geopolitical zones in the country. In many of the diplomatic missions abroad, once you have experts in Arabic language from within, then they will be able to do the needful. Why the anticipated maritime university will provide indigenous know-how in maritime sector. Our point is that we should be able to upgrade it to a, a, a degree awarding academy. It should retain its name as a Maritime Academy of Nigeria. The professional programs and courses to be offered by the university will equip the teeming youth of our states and the country. To have an institution that will provide the needed manpower, that will prepare the economy of the nation to change our circumstances. It is hoped that when the bills are finally passed, Specialized fields of study will be provided for the nation. From the National Assembly, Dayo Ogunshola, NTA News. And we are not done with the legislature as the House of Representatives has approved a budget of 257.1 billion naira for the Nigeria Customs Service for the year 2021. Also approved by the House as contained in the report of the House Committee on Customs, is a projected revenue of 1.6 trillion naira for the same year, more than 100 billion naira higher than that of 2020. Other approval is the urgent procurement of four scanners to enhance clearance at the nation's ports. Similarly, the House has approved 216.6 billion naira as the 2021 budget for the Federal Inland Revenue Service as recommended by the House Committee on Finance. The House of Plenary Thursday approved federal government's external loan request of $1.5 billion and 995 million euros to finance priority projects. Also, the National Assembly is canvassing votes for the position of the Vice President of the Pan-African Parliament during elections taking place next month in South Africa. One of Nigeria's members to the Parliament, Senator Bala Ibn Nala, tabled Nigeria's position when the caucus received the current second Vice President and the one and one of the presidential candidates who came to seek for Nigeria's support. The Malian delegation says Nigeria's role in the continental parliament is strategic for it to be able to compete with other regional parliaments globally. We want a situation where the cooperation between Mali and Nigeria will be sustained on two sides. One francophone, one anglophone. And that if she becomes president and decides that she wants a vice president from any of the uh, francophone, it will not be nice for us. We can't explain this to our people. In the history of the Pan-African Parliament, only one Nigerian has served as president. Increased digital television penetration, better quality television service, as well as an information outlet for the government to reach households in Nigeria, are some of the gains the residents of Lagos stand to gain as the state joins the League of States that have switched over from analog to digital broadcasting. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday takes a look at the phase two of the process in Nigeria. The migration to digital television offers billions of people the opportunity to be able to access a range of new services and programming globally to increase the satisfaction they derive from watching television. In June 2006, a treaty was signed at the conclusion of International Telecommunication Union Regional Radio Communication Conference in Geneva. 
heralding the development of all digital terrestrial broadcast services for radio and television. To launch this digital switch over to the glory of God. Between April 2016 and February 2018, Nigeria's first phase of the rollouts under the brand name Free TV covered Jaws, Ilori, Enugu, Oshogbo, and the Federal Capital Territory. The Federal Ministry of Information and Culture considers the DSO as one of its priority projects because of its potential to create jobs bring governance closer to the people through better access to information. The switch over, NBC said, is meant to transform television broadcasting system across the country from the current analog to digital mode. This proposition uh, especially focuses uh, on the need to leapfrog uh, the poor ordinary Nigerian who is at the lower end of the digital divide. Uh, the idea is to bring them up to also share the digital experience that is offered by the pay TV sector. The digital switch over uh, is something exciting to us because for one, it is going to reduce our cost of operations significantly. To successfully cover the entire nation, the federal government embarked on the phase two of the projects that will be rolled out in five more states, which include Kano, Rivers, Gombe, Yobe, and Lagos. In terms of transmission infrastructure, Lagos is ready to be switched on digitally. Clinical Communications Limited and the ITS. So these uh, trans, uh, signal distributors, as they are working in Lagos, they are simultaneously working in these other locations. The next set top boxes have been upgraded compared to the version produced during the phase one of the rollouts. The boxes will also have the capacity, you know, to infuse uh, uh, internet access. May 28th of this year has been slated for the first analog switch off in the country. Media chief executives and other practitioners say the first two rollouts by the present administration is a show of great political will two years after it was launched in six states. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Many thanks, Adebola. Let's now join Michael who is in our Lagos Network Center with more on how Lagos residents are reacting to the digital switch over. Over to you, Michael. Thank you, Hawa. The days when ordinary Nigerians spend so much on pay TV will soon be over as the second phase of the digital switch over kicks off in Lagos. Minister of Information and Culture Lai Mohammed said the transition fits into President Muhammad Buhari's digital economy vision and smart city plan of Lagos. Adiola Komiakiri reports. A historic day indeed, one that will take Lagos State and Nigeria up the digital train. <laughs> Lagos State is heralding the second phase of the digital switchover. And as the home of media and the business hub of Nigeria, transiting from analog to digital will go a long way in upholding digital technology nationwide. The relentless effort of the federal government was commended in ensuring that the nation's broadcast industry is at par with her global contemporaries. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, listed some of the benefits for Nigerians. With free TV's push system for information services, the free TV platform can be used to broadcast information on legal state activities to all viewers. It will also help to, it will also help advertisers in Lagos to target which programs and channels are being watched by the audience. My negotiations can also cash in on the push video on demand capability of the free TV platform to access premium blockbuster Nollywood movies from the comfort of their homes. From today, if you get a small set-top box, you are able to watch free TV in Lagos. Uh, for starters, 30 free channels, subsequently 60 or even more. 
and um, it's actually taking some time to come here, but we're glad we eventually did. The signal infrastructure is up and running. All the channels, as you can see at the backdrop, are already up and running, and uh, the boxes have been connected and they are working. There were messages from the Lagos State Government, the Director General NTA, and other dignitaries present. In Lagos, Adeola Komiakiri, NTA News. Lagos State Government says completion of financial closure and signing of consensual agreements that will signal the start of construction work on 4th Milan Bridge has been slated for December this year. Special Advisor to Governor Sonwolu on Works and Infrastructure, Aramide Adeoye, made this known at the annual ministerial briefing in Lagos. Musa Toliat has details. With a total active number of projects spread across the metropolis put at 140, the Special Advisor on Works and Infrastructure, Abramide Adeyoye, said, in spite of the ongoing projects, Lagos State Government has been working on stages that would lead to actualization of the fourth mainland bridge. By the grace of God, there is no reason why we should not get financial closure by the end of the year, so that the whole will be fine with the and the result All of the technical studies, the developer surveys, the pathetic surveys, the regulations, they've all been done. All is that happening. When we get their final, the final proposals, we will make to take adjustments. She hinted that several building projects and federal government intervention projects have added to infrastructural development in the state. In the related development, the Commissioner for Transportation said Lagos State Government is building additional jetties to attract investment in water transportation with a view to enhancing interconnectivity of various modes of transportation in the state. Lagos Ferry, since uh, uh, the administration of uh, Mr. Governor, has catered for over 500,000 trips. We have also launched the first ever government-owned floating front uh, dock so that people can fall up there and then you know, run a viable operation. He disclosed that the state government is training commercial bus drivers to sanitize the sector while efforts are being intensified to effectively regulate the operations of e-hailing cabs across the metropolis. In Lagos, Musa Tolia, NTA News. Time now for some messages, and when we return, the news continue in Abuja with Hawa. Another year older, and our amiable chief keeps getting younger, wiser, stronger, bigger, and better. Turning 68 surely looks good on our quintessential and amazing personality, business mogul and philanthropist for excellence of our time, Chief Michael Adenuga, Executive Chairman, Global Company. Today indeed marks another milestone in the remarkable journey of your life, of which Nigerian Television Authority, the largest TV network in Africa, can be proud of. Our partnership with you over the past many years is invaluable to us, even more than the most precious stones. It is our fervent prayers and wish that this special day marks the beginning of another exciting chapter in your life and brings you all that your heart desires. Happy birthday, sir, in good health and prosperity, and many happy returns of the day. Signed, Management, NTA. My name is Nancy Oyedia Orom. I'm AIT correspondent. I've been covering the presidential tax force on COVID-19 the last one year. I just took the jab, the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, and it was seamless. And I was opportune to take these vaccines with the SGF, the ministers. So I want to use this medium as a journalist for someone who has experienced COVID in the last one year. I want to implore media houses, broadcast industries. Let's join hands together to propagate the good information out there for people to believe in these vaccines. That's the only way we can have a health immunity and also achieve the projection and target of Nigeria come 2022. Well, I must implore all Nigerians to go out there, register on the Primary Health Care Development Agency website. These vaccines are free for all Nigerians. Go to the website, register. It is free for you and I. After a 
disappointing results against already relegated Sheffield United. Brighton and Hove Albion will be looking to put up an impressive performance when they welcome overachieving Leeds United this Saturday. It's Brighton and Hove Albion versus Leeds United on the Premier League Live, showing on the network service of the NTA from 2.30 p.m. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Baba Ijabu in association with Gold.com. Thanks for rejoining us. It's Nationwide. Moving on to further strengthen efforts by the federal government towards the attainment for the Sustainable Development Goal 4, with which, with which focuses on education for all, critical stakeholders in the education sector are clamoring for reduction of taxes in order to raise new funds for the sector. Elizabeth Omori reports that this was their view at a national dialogue on education financing are the instance of Action Aid Nigeria. Elijah and Angel are secondary school students who believe increased funding is critical for them to achieve their goals without disparity. It would be recalled that in 2015, world leaders agreed to achieve the 17 Sustainable Development Goals by 2030, including SDG 4. With a decade to go, what efforts are in place to achieve the goal of inclusive and equitable education in Nigeria? This question informed this gathering to map out strategies, get towards its attainment in Nigeria. The lack of um, public social spending, there is always that legendary of increasing poverty and insecurity. Because of the underlying underfunding of education, the private sector is on the increase and entrenching social inequalities, leading to the stratification and huge disparities in education. The Senate Committee reaffirmed its commitment of ensuring legislation with the sole aim of improving and rejuvenating the deplorable infrastructure teaching and learning conditions in our tertiary institutions in partnership with the Federal Ministry of Education for better teaching and learning environment via home supported and home enabled approaches in Nigeria. Increase in overall budget, provision of libraries and substantial increase in supply of teachers were part of recommendations. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NT News. And to sustain food production as a means of poverty alleviation, the Akwaibom State Government has concluded modalities to revive farming in public schools. Evelyn Bado Ekpo reports that this was at a meeting with the State Commissioner for Agriculture, Dr. Glory Edet, principals and teachers of secondary schools across the state. The meeting with principals and teachers of public schools across Okwaibom is targeted at resuscitating practical farming in school farms, as it was in the years past where compulsory farming was obtainable. Okwaibom State Commission of Agriculture, Dr. Glory Edit, who acknowledged the tremendous support of the state government to farmers towards ensuring food security, says the compulsory school farming will help increase food production. She observed the ministry's intention of carrying everyone along, including children, on practical demonstration of agriculture to further increase the knowledge and passion for farming. The state government has made provisions for cassava cuttings and maize seeds for cultivation. All schools will now go back and have their land cleared, prepared for everything. The most important one we want everybody to cultivate is cassava and other crop depending on what you have cooperative advantage. Some of the teachers and principals who lauded the initiative mentioned challenges like land encroachment, farming tools to be addressed to guarantee its success, which the commissioner assured will be channeled to the appropriate authority. Other stakeholders made meaningful contributions to encourage the compulsory school farming. The distribution of improved variety of cassava cuttings and maize seeds will be done at the senatorial district level. In Uyo, Evelyn Badu Epu, NTA News. And the Federal Executive Council has approved the augmentation of contract for the procurement of poultry in favor of states affected by crisis in 2019. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Umar Farouk, 
who announced this also said her ministry is prepared to respond most appropriately to the humanitarian crisis arising from the renewed attacks by insurgents and other criminal elements in parts of the country. State House correspondent Adam Musambo reports on this and all the resolutions adopted. President Muhammad Buhari presided over the council meeting 43rd to be held virtually in compliance with the COVID-19 safety advisory. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development presented the memo on the procurement of poultry on behalf of NEMA. Council approved the procurement of poultry for Borno, Plachu, Yobe and Zamfara State that were affected by conflict in 2019. An augmentation of more than 76 million naira has been approved for the project. The minister also used the opportunity to decry recent attacks in parts of the country by criminal elements describing the resultant humanitarian crisis as worrisome. Really, the ministry is being confronted with this uh, issues of uh, humanitarian crisis, the, uh, displacement, and so on and so forth. But we are doing our best to give a uh, first response as well as to support with durable solutions. Uh, we hope that this security situation will improve and people will go back to their normal lives and return back to their communities in safety and dignity. Two memos presented by the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timepri Silva, were also approved by the Council. One for the facility maintenance of the 17-story Nigerian Content Towers building in Yonagua for 2.1 billion naira. Another memo was also presented to Council for the operations and maintenance of a 10 megawatts power plant also in Yenagua for the sum of 712 million for two years. The minister explained that the rehabilitation of Port Harcourt refinery is on course, so also the auto gas program. The vice president is leading the effort. Uh, we've been discussing around ensuring that uh, we are able to bring in one million conversion kits for Nigerians and also at the same time ensuring that you have the dispensing facilities uh, in country. Mr. Timepri Silva also said the household gas penetration program will soon be launched. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Let's now head to Kaduna, where Salamatu is on standby with more reports on Nationwide. Thank you for joining us here, Hawa. Former Minister for Youth and Sports Solomon Dalon joins renowned Islamic scholar Sheikh Dahiru Usman Bauchi in annual Ramadan breaking of fast, commending the cleric for his support towards tackling the lingering security challenges facing the country. Haruna Mohammed reports that the former minister was in the Islamic scholar's residence in Kaduna. The report. The former minister's annual iftar with Sheikh Dair Usman Bochi is a tradition that has been kept for about a decade now. It is to identify with the fasting Muslims in the months of Ramadan, share love and strengthen mutual understanding among adherents of the two major religions. I want to call on Nigerians to embrace the tradition of unity and love. Muslims and Christians have lived in peace long, even during the prophetic age. Let there be peace, mutual understanding in Nigeria. Sheikh Dair Bauchi is optimistic that Nigeria will overcome the current security challenges while peace and progress will be restored. What Christians and Muslims are seated here, I urge you to tolerate one another as there must be mutual trust, understanding and love for the country to make progress. The renowned scholar led in special prayer for the Ummah and Nigeria. In Kaduna, Haruna Muhammad, NTA News. 
inculcating in the youth the spirit of national values and patriotism has been identified as sure way of social change and addressing Nigeria's numerous challenges. This was the focus of a youth summit organized by the National Orientation Agency in Kaduna. Gloria Tukemwodun reports. The gradual drift by some Nigerian youth from the spirit of patriotism is a matter of concern to many in the country. Once cherished national ethic jettison, giving room for antisocial tendencies such as drug abuse, violent extremism, exam malpractice, and other forms of crime, this brought about the need for this youth summit organized by the National Orientation Agency, which aims at engaging participants on government policies, social investment programs, and national core values. The youth, like you know, are the injury room of the society. Indeed, they are the backbone of every society. It is this realization that the National Orientation Agency and indeed the federal government thought it wise to channel their energy for national development. It is my hope that uh, at the end of the seminar, uh, a lot of people will have something to take home. How to equip youth with the new skills and ideas to improve their quality of life dominated discussions at the summit. Gloria to Kenwadung, NTA News. And that completes our bulletin from here. We now rejoin Hawa in Abuja for the continuation of Nationwide. Well, Salama to and here in Abuja, and it's bed to harness the leadership capacity of young Nigerians. For national development, the African Democratic Congress, ADC, has offered entertainment stars free tickets to run for elective offices of their choice in future elections. Timothy Yusuf reports that the party's national chairman, Raf Musu, disclosed this in Abuja at the formal presentation of the certificate of endorsement of the ADC as one party for Nigerian youth and women. ADC is a learning platform. We're not just a political party. The national chairman of the African Democratic Congress, Raf Okenwosu, while receiving a certificate of endorsement to the party from an online poll as a youth-friendly platform advanced reasons for the choice of free tickets for the celebrities. Major among the reasons is what the chairman described as the entertainment industry's impressive contribution to the nation's GDP. I have all reasons to believe that the youth are ready to drive the National Transformation Initiative that is well captured in the ADC manifesto, hashtag a new Nigeria at ADC.com. ADC National Youth Leader Maurice Ebam reaffirmed the party's commitment to addressing the concerns of the youth as future leaders. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf. And the federal government has launched the revised national policy of occupational safety and health in the workplace in commemoration of the 2021 World Day for Safety and Health at Work. Minister of State, Labor and Employment, Festus Kayamo, said this is considered important, particularly as the coronavirus pandemic exposes the workplace to the risk of transmitting the virus. Emmanuel Aimiro is on standby. Due to the exigency of the moment occasioned by COVID-19 pandemic ravaging the globe, the International Labour Organization says countries need to put in place sound and resilient occupational safety and health systems that would minimize the risk for everyone in the workplace in the event of future health emergencies. A theme that echoes these proactive efforts has therefore been chosen for the 2021 Occupational Safety at Work, which is anticipate, prepare, and respond to crisis, invest now in resilient occupational safety and health systems. This the federal government considered to be key in ensuring safety in the world of work. The revised national policy on occupational safety and health 2020, which also gives specific roles to agencies of government, is aimed at ensuring that all workers are safe and healthy at their workplaces across the country. We also are very, very happy to have been part of the stakeholders that have 
the opportunity to enrich and validate the guideline, which will assist in enforcing the policy. We do what is necessary to reduce workplace accidents and diseases by incorporating a safety and wellness plan. With the reversed national policy in place, the task is for organizations to adhere strictly to safety guidelines, which before now has been a challenge for most employers. Emmanuel Ayemiwo, NTA News. And it's the turn of Ogochukuka in Benin. The Ondo State Judicial Panel of Inquiry on Police Brutality and Other Related Matters has recommended payments of over 700 million Naira compensation claimed by the petitioners. Abiola Ario reports that the state governor, Lua Rotimia Keridulu, received the report in Akure. Besides payments of the over 755 million Naira, the panel also recommended publication of apologies in national dailies, particularly where the reputation of victims had been tarnished. Chairman of the panel, Justice Adeshola Sadiq, retired, who led other members to submit the report, said the panel heard 14 criminal and 63 civil matters in the petitions. The panel, after various visits to the local structures, observed that four out of the 18 local government areas of the state, that is, Akure South, Kondo West, Kodiko, and Kodikoba, were affected. The as Governor Akeridolu saluted members of the panel for doing a diligent and transparent job. The ones that the government are responsible, where well, you want to hold the government responsible, uh, that, that we have uh, ruined people's reputation. If we find it, we will, we will offer apologies. The governor immediately dissolved the nine member panel in Akure, Abiola, Rio. NTA News. And here, Governor Godwin Obaseki has attributed the cause of insecurity pervading the country to difficult economic challenges with a promise to ensure stability in the state. The governor was speaking shortly after a closed door meeting with the new AIG Zone 5, Isaac Akimoyede. Elizabeth Omoko has details. The rising insecurity in the country with vicious attack on local communities and kidnapping of people by criminal groups is one Governor Basaki described as challenging. The roots of insecurity can be traced to the very difficult economic situation that the country currently finds itself. Governor Basaki expressed his administration's determination to ensure peace and stability in the states. We have been fortunate in the do. Um, if you compare the situation today, to what it was about two, three months ago, you will appreciate that a lot of work has been done. Um, we have a lot more stability security-wise in Edo today, uh, thanks to our service chiefs. The state is still, and um, we intend, myself, come, I intend to ensure that uh, they maintain that uh, stability and we'll do everything that we need to do in order to ensure that uh, we have peace in the state. The new Assistant Inspector General commended the leadership qualities of Governor Basaki and the effort of all security agencies within Edo and Delta in Benin. Elizabeth Omako, NTA News. The next set of reports will be coming from Sokoto and Sadia is standing by. Good afternoon. Youths are about the greatest assets the country has at the moment. It is therefore not surprising that the administration of President Mamad Buhari is strategically responding to the yearnings of the youth through multiple projects and programs. Youth Entrepreneurship Support Years by Bank of Industry, the Youth Investment Fund by the CBN, and several other conditional cash transfer programs. Recruitment of 774,000 social workers, majority of whom are youths. And so so 
many other projects that are beneficial to youths directly or indirectly. If the administration can do all this, definitely, with a degree of patience and time, it can achieve more. Nigerian youths must come together to say no to terrorism, no to vandalism, and no to all disruptive tendencies. Hashtag Youth for Greater Nigeria, pacifying the youths, unifying the nation. It's the dawn of a new era on NTA's flagship program, The Sports Parliament, revitalized with lots of varieties, including feedback responses from viewers. Sports Parliament, the weekly sports show that exposes all the intrigues in the Nigerian sports sector and projects an agenda on the way forward for Nigerian sports. On NTA, every Thursday at 10.30 p.m., running for one whole hour discussing sports. The parliamentarians are more committed than ever to enlighten the viewers as the sports parliament takes it to a whole new level on the floor of the house. Keep a date with the sports parliament as motions are moved every Thursday on the floor of the house. Mr. Speaker, which is gavel to harmonize sports resolutions. The house have it. After a disappointing result against already relegated Sheffield United, Brighton and Hove Albion will be looking to put up an impressive performance where they welcome overachieving Leeds United this Saturday. It's Brighton and Hove Albion versus Leeds United on the Premier League Live, showing on the network service of the NTA from 2.30 p.m. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Baba Ijebu in association with Gold.com. <laughs> Stakeholders at the fifth Women Ramadan Lecture in Kebi State advocated for more policies and programs to address the numerous challenges facing women folk in Nigeria. Hassan Abukar Koko reports that the lecture was organized by the wife of the Kebi State Governor, Dr. Zainab Shikafi Babudu. The Kebi Women Ramadan Lecture, a brainchild of the wife of the Kebi State Governor, Dr. Zainab Shinkafi Bagudu, started in the year 2016, focusing on topical societal issues relating to women. Dr. Zainab Shinkafi Bagudu, who highlighted women challenges to include gender-based violence, especially during the lockdown, girl-child education, and the economic downturn, among others, called for more collaborative effort from stakeholders in tackling the problems. She applauded the efforts of the state government in addressing the problems faced by women, especially on the girl-child education and women empowerment. It's important that as mothers, wives, daughters and sisters, we continue to play a supporting role in sustaining the family courts. This has helped to preserve peace and directly improve the mental health of the family. Governor Abubakar Atiku Bagudu informed the gathering that his administration secured a $70 million World Bank grant to strengthen girl-child education and other skills acquisition schemes. He added that women across the state have also benefited a lot from the agricultural revolution of the APC government. Notable national and international speakers at the lecture include Sheikh Ismail Mufti Menk, Sheikh Jabri Sani Mayhula, and Sister Naima B. Roberts, among others. From Bruni Kebi, Hassan Abubakar Koko, NTE News. Now, Zamfara State Government has provided clothing materials and cash to 60,000 orphans from across the 14 local government areas of the state. This is part of its annual Ramadan and Salah welfare packages to people, especially the needy. Jamile Ibrahim has more. Zamfara State Governor Bello Mohammed recently flagged up the distribution of clothes and cash to 60,000 orphans drawn from across the 40 local government areas of the state. In mandated the state the card and endowment board to undertake a substantial part of the exercise. Accordingly, the distribution of the clothing materials and cash to the screened orphans continued at the headquarters of the board with massive turnout of the prospective beneficiaries. Executive Chairman of the board, Professor Kabiru Umar Jabaka, Represented by Director of Distribution Dr. Awel Ibrahim Lansado, 
said the exercise was well organized to cover all the targeted beneficiaries. Zakat and Endowment Board used to distribute um, these materials to the orphans, to over 40,000 orphans. But this year, the state government decides to increase the number to 60,000, and it's done through uh, the polling units. As he said a total of 3,900 persons comprising orphans fiscally challenged, less privileged, and some Islamic schoolers are to receive the package at the boat headquarters Guso. This is in addition to the 6,900 others who received the assistance at the 17 Emirates level across the state. Each of the male beneficiaries received five yards of the Guinea brocade and 1,000 Naira cash for sewing, while their female counterparts benefit from the same amount and one wrapper each. Some of the orphans and their parents who spoke with NTA News expressed gratitude to the state government for the gesture, describing it as very timely. It is however observed that this year the distribution of assorted foodstuffs to the orphans has been decentralized to polling units level in Gusau, Jamilu Ibrahim, NTA News. And that's it from here. It's back to Hawa in Abuja. That's it from Very here. well, Sadia. And still on the upcoming 2021 Workers' Day, Improving safety of workers, their families, and public institutions in the face of rising insecurity were issues of concern at the National Peace Summit organized by the Nigeria Labour Congress. Emmanuel Aimiro reports that considered efforts to interrogate all indices responsible for the siege of insecurity were also deliberated. International Labour Organization's Recommendation 202 provides for national social protection covering for the unprotected, the poor, and the most vulnerable, including workers in the informal economy and their families. So also is Recommendation 205, which provides an instrument that addresses the world of work issues in crisis situations. For the NLC, these two recommendations are key in addressing insecurity affecting the working class, while other speakers called for genuine dialogue that will guarantee peaceful coexistence. Our armed forces are capable of bringing this insurgency to an end if they are better armed, equipped, and modern technology and adequate motivation is deployed. Nigeria, since 1999, is being run as a unitary government. I'm advising my people, please, if you have been sleeping five hours in a night, cut it down to two or three hours. Let us try to mask this unknown government. For the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, Nigerian kind of solutions must be applied in addressing the crisis. We must answer the clarion call to come together as a people and defeat this common enemy of the country that is assuming a frightening dimension. Injury to one, injury to all. At the end of the deliberations, the summit is expected to produce a coherent peace-building agenda that will complement government initiatives on national security. Emmanuel Ayemiro, NTA News. And still on security matters, the Ogun State Police Command says abductors of two female students of the Olabisi or Nabanjo University, Ago Iwoye, have been arrested. The police said the suspected kidnappers were arrested two days after the kidnapped students were released. Lukman Adifiso's report is here presented. Leading the suspected kidnappers, Babuga Abubakar, Umaru Usman, Mohamed Bello, Haruna Sonny, among others, Ogun State Commissioner of Police Edward Ajogun says the suspects belong to three different kidnapped gangs operating within Ayituru Imekwafon, Igbora, Lagos, Ibadan Expressway, and Ijebu Axis. The suspects confessed that they were the ones who kidnapped two female students of Olabisi Odobaji University, a female doctor, and a nurse along Abekuta in Meko Road. They also confessed to killing of one Mrs. Yemi Ojelakbo when they realized that the disease had recognized them. 
The police also paraded two suspected armed robbers, Ogunaike Phillips and Isaiah Onifade, for robbing operators of POS using dangerous weapons to intimidate and harm their victims. So when I got there, so I just marshaled the woman and carried the, woman, carried the money. Confirming the dismissal of three police officers for allegedly extorting money to the tune of 153,000 naira from a student in Ogun State, the CP says no erring officers capable of denting the image of the Nigerian police force will be spared under his watch. No CP will sleep, no IG will sleep within the level of insecurity we are having in this country. Then another one will be causing us pain. For what? So if he's the one, and if he's, if he's the one has to go and chase a kidnapper now, you see a kidnapper in the bush and collect the ransom from him and, uh, and escape? And you call yourself a police officer? No! It's a noble, it's a noble job. He attributed the success recorded to effective synergy among the security agencies in the state, including the cooperation of vigilantes and members of the public for their useful information. The Christian Association of Nigeria, Imo State, has condemned the recent attacks in the state and is appealing for peace. Chairman of the association, Reverend Divine Ache, at a press briefing in Owere, also called for an all-inclusive search for lasting peace in the country. The report. Imo State has in recent time come under attacks resulting in the destruction of government and private facilities. It is in line with this that the members of the Christian Association of Nigeria Imo State branch are here to lend their voice to the series of appeals for peace. The state chairman, Reverend Divine HS, describes the wanton destruction of lives and property as unfortunate and retrogressive, stressing the need for perpetrators of the attacks to shun violence and to the path of peace. The Christianization of Nigeria, Imo State chapter, called for an end to insurgency. We say no to banditry, to hooliganism, no to every form of lawlessness. We are not known for such. Imo State is a peaceful state and we will remain so. We appeal to everyone to allow peace to reign because this is the only place we can call our home. While promising to continue to pray for peace and calm in Imo State and Nigeria at large, the group appeals to all to continue to support the efforts of the government towards checking the present security challenges in the country. In Owere, Bright Ebuchu, NTA News. And the Judicial Committee of Inquiry on NSAS has recommended that Nassau State Government compensates all victims of alleged police brutality in the state with more than 400 million naira. This is one of the recommendations as the committee submitted its report to Governor Abdullahi Suley. Abdullahi Ali Tijani Mohammed reports. During its month of sittings, the Judicial Committee of Inquiry into alleged police brutality in the state received 47 petitions, out of which 14 were struck out. While submitting the four volumes report to Governor Abdullah Hisule. The Commission has come to the conclusion that some of the petitioners are entitled to compensation. Governor Sule commended the committee for its thorough work and promised that government will study the recommendations with a view to implement them. The level of seriousness that you have put into this is highly commendable. It shows the quality of people that we have selected the maturity that they have shown, their professionalism, and your total commitment to be able to do this, uh, carry out what is just, you know, to ensure that people who have been wronged are properly compensated. I think this is a highly commendable work. In Lafia, Ali Utijan Mohamed, NTA News. And sports is next with Kenneth Imar Bodike. Following their straight sets defeat to CS Faxian of Tunisia in the semi finals of 2021 CAVB Women's African Volleyball Clubs Championship in Calibia, Tunisia, on Wednesday, Nigeria's customs team have vowed to bounce back against Kenya Precincts in the third place match on Friday. The team will play well to defend the honor of Nigeria Customs Service and even to propagate the good image of Nigeria as a country as a whole when we play our match tomorrow. So they should expect the best from us tomorrow.
in football, Ayimba International Football Club of Aba are relishing their CAF Confederation Cup quarterfinals qualification after an added time winner against the visiting Orlando Pirates of South Africa in Aba on Wednesday. Cyril Odisema's late strike ensured Ayimba finished leaders of Group A as fans look forward to Friday's quarterfinals draw. Uh, by special grace of God, we're not going to let Nigeria down. By special grace of God, we're going to work hard. Uh, no matter who is the next uh, opponent, uh, we just want to be working and continue winning so that at the end, we will come out with the fly color. Meanwhile, reactions to the outcome of first leg semi finals of UEFA Champions League after Manchester City fought back to beat 10 man Paris on Germain 2 1 in France on Wednesday, with Real Madrid and Chelsea settling for a 1 0 draw earlier in Spain. The possibility that there is going to be an all English final is very high. If Manchester City uh, can continue or play the way they played in the second half against uh, PSG, uh, they will surely uh, see themselves uh, you know, in uh, the final. The second leg fixtures are set for next week with Chelsea hosting Real Madrid on May 4, while Paris Saint-Germain visits Manchester City on May 5. With sports update, Kenan Ima Abodike, NTA News. And sports wraps nationwide today. We thank you for watching. But always remember to stand with us here at the NTA as we fight against rape and rapists. I'm Hawa Salihu Adama. Good evening.